Hello friends, this is Odds, and today I have some hot takes for you. We're going to be talking about a group of perks that I consider to be problematic or unhealthy for the game. Some people, whenever I talk about these perks, quickly lose their mind. They think that I'm crazy because they think these perks are fine, or they're not even that strong, or they're not even used by anyone ever, so what's the big deal? Uh, but that's not what we're, what we're talking about today. We're not talking about their popularity or how strong or weak they are, but rather, what is the effect that they have on the gameplay? What is the effect they have on the overall game? Do they make the game more fun, more healthy for both sides? And the answer for most of these perks is a resounding no. We can start with the worst offender. Hex Pentimental. This is a perk that basically grows in power whenever the killer finds a totem that has been destroyed by the survivors, and then you can relight that totem and create new ones. And the more you have, the stronger it gets. The first two effects are the most common ones you're going to get and are already very, very strong. It's the slower healing and slower gens, which is the first one. And this is absolutely brutal. This is far, far stronger than most hexes, even some of the stronger ones. So there is a problem with this perk already. On its own, it does absolutely nothing unless survivors cleanse totems. And survivors cleanse totems for points, for side objectives and archives, and maybe to power up certain weak perks like inner strength, which is far from being super meta, or overzealous or clairvoyant. So punishing survivors super, super hard for doing a side objective just feels absolutely awful. There was an archive not long ago to do totems, and if you run this perk during that week, I guarantee you, you would destroy most of your games. It You should never have an effect that is so, so strong. That can happen randomly against teams that are just minding their business and just doing side objectives. Uh, it also makes it so that if you ever go against a kill that has a hex, unless it's Devour Hope, and even if it is Devour Hope, you probably want to not do totems until you absolutely have to, because the threat of this perk is way, way stronger than any hex. In fact, if I ever get plaything, I don't ever cleanse my plaything, because not having a terror radius on me is much better than everyone else being 30% slower on gens. 30% slowdown on gens is absolutely brutal, by the way. You have to get rid of that totem. It makes gens take about two minutes, and this obviously makes any pop or pain res or any other slowdown that comes on top much, much harder to deal with. A really unfair perk that punishes side objectives and is very badly thought out. And it, even if you know it's there as a Subaru, what are you going to do? Just ignore other totems. I don't think it's very healthy at all. Moving on is the recently buffed Buckle Up. It's funny that this perk used to be useless and now it's generally one of the insane, most insane perks in the game. Whenever you pick up a survivor from the ground, you and the survivor both get a massive 10 seconds of endurance, uh, plus a few other effects. Now, this wouldn't be a big deal if it wasn't for the fact that this works with four other people. There is a problem. There is a problem. Th this perk would be okay in a vacuum if you only used it to pick up survivors from the ground when the killer is getting a little bit greedy and slugging. But that's not what happens. What you do with this perk is to run it with further people so you can run to a teammate on the ground, immediately pick them up if you're healthy, and then both you and that person are essentially invincible for the next 10 seconds, which allows you to get free escapes at the exit gates, um, free protection against any kind of chase. It also is not as good against the super aggressive killers that can actually get everybody injured relatively easily, the top tier killers mostly. So this is a perk that works so well against lower tier killers and allows you and a coordinated team to get away with almost anything. And the sad part is that the team, the, the, the killer doesn't really have any real counterplay. The only counterplay perhaps is to try to injure everybody, much easier said than done, and have some anti-healing perks so that the person that might have this is injured and cannot use for the people. Uh, and survivors obviously can reply to this by bringing stronger healing items or perks. So, uh, absolutely overtuned perk that has no fun counterplay, no matter how you look at it. Absolutely should be reworked. Uh, to at least not work with further people. Next up is Say the Best for Last. This is high in the, in the, in the department of unhealthy perks. Uh, by, but this is by far the perk that most uh, people defend and I get most pushback when I talk against it. I used to love this perk. I thought this perk was great. Uh, it's obviously a very strong perk because it allows you to be more and more relentless in chase. And that's generally not a problem. Survivors can eventually see that it's there and they can try to throw the obsession at you. There is some counterplay. Um, but most killers that run this perk will have a power to hit you with, so it's pretty unavoidable that near the end of the game, this perk is going to have a lot of stacks. And around that time, 
this perk allows you to do two things that, in my opinion, are really, really disgusting. The first one is to just shred through deep wound and protection and endurance states. In many situations, the killer has options to play really, really scummy and, and camp a hook or immediately tunnel someone. And there are perks and, and base kit features to protect that person from dying too quickly. Uh, the base kit endurance, decisive, all these things. With, with Say the Best for Last, you are pretty much encouraged encourage because you gain stacks to hit people that come out of the hook for those stacks even if you don't tunnel them and i don't think that's very very good it also has this whole thing where in the end game you will uh hook a person and if you have several stacks there is nothing that can be done by the survivors unless they also run deliverance or something it is almost impossible to guarantee any kind of escape no matter how many survivors you have if the killer has saved the best for last unless you have a minute to you know Send the obsession, take a hit, maybe, and then it's it's basically impossible. Uh, <laughs> so the end game potential and the tunneling potential of Say the Best for Last, I think, is a little bit too much. The way I would change this perk, if you hit a survivor and they have deep wound, you don't gain stacks. That should be, or maybe the perk doesn't work uh, and you have a normal uh, cooldown, just to discourage killers from just always hitting people off the hook. That I think shouldn't be too much of a nerf and would make the perk still good otherwise i also think that once the last gen is powered the perk should not be able to gain more stacks now this means that if at the end of the game you have eight stacks you you're still fine but if you hit the obsession now you're at, you're at four you don't have eight uh you don't and if you hit someone else you cannot get to five and six you cannot gain them anymore that means that in any game scenarios you could theoretically send the obsession to take a couple hits then heal them, then send the obsession to take a couple hits. And if you have enough teamwork, you can play around this perk. And it's not, it doesn't create these situations where the killer will just camp one guy and there's nothing you can do and you just have to leave because he has saved the best for last. I don't think that it's fun for either side when survivors just realize that, oh, there's nothing we can do, let's just leave. I think it's more exciting if they actually have a reason and a risk to take to go for a rescue. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on Say This Floss. Next up is Adrenaline. Adrenaline is a really, really powerful perk. We've explained why a million times. Um, but the thing about this perk that still irks me, the, like, that still rubs me the wrong way, uh, it's not the fact that it can pick you up from the ground. It's not the fact that it can give you the speed boost, which is pretty insane. It's a very strong perk, but that's fine. Um, the first thing, it still wakes you up against Freddy. Why? Freddy is one of the weaker killers on the game. It doesn't have any insane power that would justify one perk having an effect that only works against him. Why does this perk wake you up against Freddy in the endgame? No reason. That should be removed tomorrow. They've removed far, you know, less interesting things about, about other perks affecting specific killers, so that should go. And another thing that I also think is completely messed up is that it works out of a hook. I cannot understand why that's a thing. Um, if you if you don't know, um, if you have adrenaline and you're currently being carried, what the killer has to do to play around you is to drop you, then you insta-pick yourself up, and then he hits you, and then he puts you on the hook. That is so stupid. There should never be a situation where a killer has to drop a survivor. Maybe, maybe in case of adrenaline. That's, I feel like that's such a dumb thing to do. If they don't do that, or if they couldn't do that, what's gonna happen is that when you get unhooked, you will come out full health. I've, seen, I've been in so many games where I get punished for hooking multiple survivors. The, the killers right now have a very limited incentive to hook multiple survivors. Unless they have certain perks or the situation comes for free, you always want to hook one guy three times first because it's just so convenient and you dodge so many strong perks. So if in the mid game you hook three people uh, and, and two of them end up in hooks and then the last one pops, those people coming at full health, you literally are worse than if you had just slugged them. If you had just slugged them on the ground, left them on the ground, they would be at least injured. You literally get punished. You give them a free health state for hooking them, which means that if you expect the last one to pop, you won't even want to hook them. You would rather just leave them on the ground or ignore them and just turn one person off. That effect that it has on, on what killers should be doing, I think is very, very nasty. And I would change that. I would make adrenaline not work off hook or not work if you're being carried. Simple as that. Uh, next, we have Made for This. Made for This has two effects, and each of them enough would be good enough for a perk on its own. The fact that there are so many horrible perks in the game that have very bad effects, 
and then this perk has two good effects, it's so unfair. That alone, I think, makes it very unfair. But why is it unhealthy for the game? I've made a video that covers it in a bit more detail, but yeah. The, 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 the very insidious 3% that stacks with other speed boosts is pretty nasty. The, the, the fact that survivors get 10 seconds of endurance for healing, and you as a killer get punished for going for the healer, that is, let's say, let's say that you hook one person, and that person gets healed under the hook by someone else that's injured. The healthy thing right now for the game would be for you to go for the healer and not tunnel. But now if they have this perk, you get punished. So it's almost better for you to go for the person that's been healed, which is possibly the person that came off the hook. It does again punish the killer for going for different targets and rewards the survivors for doing something that they should be doing naturally. Uh, it does a little bit too much for, for almost no investment and you can still use exhaustion perks on top of it uh if you don't mind losing it temporarily pretty pretty nasty perk i also believe that the reason why they've made so many exhaustion perks it's like so many exhaustion perks right now for killer is because they thought that yeah we'll we'll just give killer uh something like genetic limits and they thought that that would be completely fine it would be like a natural counter it is not it is definitely not next up is knockout knockout is such a difficult perk to understand it does slow down Subaru crawling on the ground, which is okay, that's that's a fine effect, I suppose. But it also makes them invisible to other survivors, and immediately this creates a divide. It makes this perk very, very good against solo players that don't know anything of what's going on, and it makes it rather useless against teams that are on comms. I don't think there should be a perk that creates such a divide that is so good against one group and so mediocre against another. The only people that run perks like uh, that run perks like knockout consistently are really nasty players that just want to leave you on the ground for four minutes, which is which is already some of the most unfun thing you can do in DBD. Even though I've run this perk a lot for challenges and other stuff, I still think it's really, really unhealthy and really awful. Next, we have Deliverance, a very, very strong perk on the survivor side where if you rescue someone and then you get hooked you can unhook yourself basically for free you become broken this perk is a staple of competitive play and it's i would say it's single-handedly the one perk that makes playing killer in in tournaments extremely difficult what survivors will do in, in tournaments normally you only have one deliverance they only have one person and they'll have that person hide and make sure they don't get chased first. But obviously, in your normal games, you could have multiple. What will happen with this uh, perk? Number one, if a Subaru unhooks themselves, they don't trigger Devour Hope. They don't trigger Floods of Rage. Uh, they don't trigger Make Your Choice. So this counters several killer perks, which is not a big deal. But more importantly, it basically punishes you for hooking someone other than the person that you hooked initially. So how do you do, how do you dodge deliverance by mega super super turbo tunneling the first person? If you somehow manage to insta down insta down the first person upon on hook, the second guy doesn't get deliverance. So if you're playing Baba and you hit them twice with your chainsaw, which they're gonna address, thank God. Or if you have Huntress and you throw Hatchet and Hatchet and Hatchet and M1 and you immediately murder the person, they don't get deliverance. So you as a killer get. Um, punished if you don't tunnel, and you get rewarded if you do tunnel super aggressively. And if you obviously chase the person that is off the hook, then the other guy doesn't get to use Deliverance. So, Deliverance essentially rewards survivors for unhooking, and rewards them with a very momentum-killing perk, if the killer doesn't tunnel. But if the killer does tunnel, you get nothing. That doesn't feel right. I feel like Deliverance should almost work the opposite way. What if you rescue someone and that person gets uh, hooked again, you get Deliverance. And I don't know, I feel like that could push back against the very obvious incentive that killers have right now to just tunnel a person out of the game. Next up, we have No Way Out. No Way Out is an amazing perk that I think is overall very, very healthy. Um, in the end game, it blocks the gates longer the more people you have hooked. But for some reason, it also works in the 1v1, which is incredibly unfun. Imagine that you're the last person alive, and you try to open a gate, and the gate is unopenable, and the killer knows where you are because they get a notification. Why? And even if it's at, ze if, even if it's at zero stacks, that notification still happens, and you still get the blockage for a few seconds. That is so weird. Leave the perk as it is, but make it not work on the uh, 1v1. If you close the hatch, the perk is disabled, and it would still be 100% fine. It's not that important that you get that that fourth kill every time. 
Uh, we then go to perks that are definitely not on the same level as being so obnoxiously unhealthy, but still have small issues. Uh, the first one, it's a uh, power struggle. This perk is really, really stupid. Uh, you don't see it very often. It's, it doesn't come into play very often, but there are two situations where it's quite nasty. The first one is when people run it with flip-flop and they are part of our coordinated team. And there's a lot of situations where if a survivor goes down on a pallet and there's someone nearby, you have a lose-lose situation as a killer where if, you, if you're not like Wesker or Slinger that can pull them out of the pallet, you're, you're basically screwed. If the survivors... Uh, first, if, um, if, if the survivors are nearby and they play it right, if you pick up, they'll drop the pallet and rescue. And if you don't pick up, then that person will be unpickable. And there are some very nasty situations uh, that result uh, from this. That being said, it requires a bit of teamwork. It requires multiple perks. Once the pallet's gone, it should be relatively over, right? So it's not so simple. But the problem here is what happens if you play twins. If you play twins... Um, this perk will destroy you. You Even if you're really close to the survivor, just switching back from your power already allows a flip-flop power struggle user to free themselves. That is a problem more with twins than with this perk, so we're gonna give it a, a, a pass. But yeah, it does it does create some, some really stupid situations where a killer can basically do nothing and you're like, oh, well, I'm just gonna leave him on the ground, which I don't think is fun for either side. Uh, next up is uh, Force Hesitation, a really strange perk that only triggers when you down one survivor and then anyone around you gets slowed down. I don't see... It. Like, this perk, if you play normally, is super hard to get value out of, but at the same time, it works really, really well when people are taking protection hits, when people are being tunneled and trying to prevent it, and it's basically a really mean perk to play meaner. And it... it, it I don't know. I guess you could argue, well, that's almost every other perk out there. Any perk can be used for these purposes, and you might be right. But I have a feeling that this is a perk that almost encourages you to play, to play like, like the dirtiest you possibly can. So I don't super mega love it. I, I, I don't. I don't think the design is very good. We then have boil over. This perk used to be really bad. Then they buffed it, and it was a nightmare. And now it's in a spot where it's not as offensive. Uh, but it's still a, really, a little bit stupid. Uh, the problem with this perk, uh, it, it hides the nearby um, hooks, but not very well. That part of the perk could be a bit stronger. It could, it could pick one hook that is close to you and just hide it, uh, you know, forever. So that killers are tricked into walking to a further hook if they don't realize the perk is, is working. But the problem with this perk is that there are a lot of maps that survivors can obviously send themselves to where this perk does a lot of damage. If you go down in certain areas, in certain maps, and you have this, and you can't even go through doorways, uh, a lot of spots in Badham, a lot of spots in RPD, a lot of spots in indoor maps like this, Midwitch, uh, I suppose, I'm sure has some spots. Like, it's one of these perks that just encourages the most disgusting, uh, exploitative gameplay, where survivors will... Survivors will not normally run this perk. If you run this perk normally, you're not going to see that much value on average. But you will going to find that one or two spots where the killer just cannot hook you and you're just going to go there. And I also don't feel that that, that is very fun. Next up is Hope. Uh, again, this is not a perk that I have a lot of issue on, on its own. But the fact that uh, Haste still stacks and that this perk gives you 7 Haste... I do think is quite insane. Um, it, it mostly happens when you run it with MFT, but I don't think there should be any circumstance when a survivor is consistently, consistently running at 110 when the killer sometimes is 110 themselves or 115. So yeah, um, make hope or any haste not stack. Make only the, uh, the highest haste apply and then hope would be fine. We don't have a problem. Streetwise is probably a perk that most of you don't even think about ever. Me neither, don't tell me wrong. But this perk is actually insane. This perk makes good items last a little bit longer. And the biggest issue is that it stacks with itself. So when you have multiple survivors on a, on a, on a gen, the new proof that itself has been nerfed, so that's that's a little bit better. And, and this perk is in play. You can actually have them use really strong toolboxes for a very long time and not even be halfway done with them. So... For almost everything else, for medkits, for keys, this this is mostly fine. And obviously can be outclassed by things like build to last or even scavenger. But I do think that this perk could be a bit stronger and then just not stack. So that it's, it doesn't have the super obnoxious 
uh, super long toolboxes and super strong toolboxes that you can do if you bring a squad with full full of toolboxes and full of this perk, which can be a bit ridiculous. Next up, we have Pain Rest. This perk does a little bit too much. It is a healthy perk in that it encourages you to hook the survivor and then hook a different survivor and then hook a different survivor. What ends up, what ends up happening a lot of times is that killers hook one survivor, then they trade at the hook and then they get another one, but they trade it and they kept putting pressure by camping it. Or they hook one survivor, get pain rest, pop a gen, then they tunnel that survivor, then they get pop, and that's still pretty good. And they don't really care. By the time by the time someone is dead, they can they can start to use the remaining pain restes on the last gen or two and they'll be fine. I don't understand why Ruin deactivates when one person is dead and Pain Rest doesn't. How about we make Pain Rest deactivate when one person has died? And that way, if you want to hook multiple people, that's great, but you can hook multiple people after you've already tunneled one guy out and get the effects. It's a very strong perk that should be a bit more restrained. The fact that it also makes people scream and trigger them and switch and all of that, I also think is a bit disgusting, but that would be, I guess, all right. Next, uh, Ultimate Weapon, an insane, insane track and perk that is good on bad killers and insane on good killers, on the higher tier killers. This perk is way too easy to use, does way too much, it even robs survivors of um, their windows of opportunity and other auto reading because it makes them blind. And it's it also interrupts them doing certain critical actions such as totems and, and jigsaw boxes. The, the, the evil potential for this perk, who, which has a very small cooldown by the way, is so ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous. Mm. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, how, how do you change this perk? How do you change this perk in order to keep it relevant? Maybe make it only work a limited amount. Maybe make it uh, uh, like okay. Just think about this, okay? Think about Thwack. Thwack makes Subaru scream, and you can only use it every time you hook someone. But this perk you can use whenever the heck you want. I'm not gonna tell you that this perk should only work after a hook. But maybe it should have some other kind of condition. The fact that people are even running calm spirit to avoid this perk should already tell you just how obnoxiously ubiquitous it is. Uh, make it have some condition. Give it a longer cooldown. Make it not work on lockers, which I still think someone told me might be an issue. If they fixed it, great. Um, definitely buff calm spirit, so it's actually a viable perk to run, not just against this. And maybe only, maybe maybe make it work only on people that you haven't hooked yet. Well, no, that would be a problem because then you would be encouraging it on people that don't hook like Sadako. Mm. Yeah, no, it's complicated. It's complicated. I don't have a great idea on how to immediately address this perk. Maybe I'll think about it a bit more. And maybe you guys have an idea that you can leave in the comments. Next up is Face the Darkness. Not a super meta perk, in, in my opinion, but also has a similar problem by making survivors scream and interrupting themselves. I see this perk being a problem against Pig, mostly. I don't think you should, like... Uh, I don't think that if you're doing a box on an action that can potentially kill you, your scream should interrupt it. Maybe what, what they should do with Pig is make it so that if you scream, you lose some of the progress, but you don't lose all of it. Um, so yeah, maybe this is more of a pig issue than a face of darkness issue. If there's any other killer that can make this perk really, really obnoxious and really, really difficult, uh, I'd like to know. I can think of maybe Pinhead and some other ones, but yeah. Um, again, mm, maybe maybe, maybe this is more of an issue on, on the pig specifically, because you can make traps basically impossible to solve if you're constantly... Uh, interrupting yourself with scrims. Next up is Hyper Focus, which is a really, really difficult perk to classify. I think this perk is somewhat problematic. Uh, the first issue is cheaters. I don't think there's any interest. I don't think I've seen anyone do it, but at least theoretically, this perk should be extremely, extremely um, good for cheaters in two different ways. Number one, if you get extremely lucky, this perk can make a generator. Uh, be completed in in about half the time. If you get very, very, very lucky, obviously we'll talk about some other things that you can do later to make it happen more. So if you play against a cheater who does gens 30% faster and they have this perk, congratulations, now you have no idea if they're really a cheater or not. If they're a cheater and they have a toolbox, well, you could, you could be like, well, maybe they did one gen fast, but it's a toolbox, so it's understandable. But if they keep doing gens across, you know, across the map throughout the game really, really fast and they have this perk, it totally could be a legit player or it could be a cheater and you would not know the difference just because this perk can be so insane especially if you have stakeout which it i don't know if it's a bug but it it, it enhances the the extra points from stakeout 
and especially if you get lucky with skill checks and you don't get interrupted, this perk can go anywhere from useless to saving half a gen of time and making a gen pop 40 seconds sooner, which is insane. Is it fair that we have a perk that can do so much, but that is also so fickle, that can be so strong or so weak based on luck alone? I don't think so. I would somehow make this perk a little bit easier to use. A little bit, doesn't need to be a lot. Make it also work better with healing. Maybe make it a bit more uh, forgiving if you let go of the gen for just a second and you get back to it quickly. So that if you scream from say, infectious fried or ultimate weapon, you don't lose your streak but also make the returns a bit more consistent and less depending on luck and less dependent on other factors. Uh, next up is Off The Record. Uh, this is another perk that does a lot. It protects you from uh, from being hit because it gives you endurance for 80 seconds. Uh, it also makes you not do any, any injured noises and it hides you from artists. That's a lot of stuff for a single perk. And if anything, they should make this perk like like a common perk so that survivors don't need to buy a DLC to have it. Um, but there's two things about this perk that are weird. Number one is that even if you go on a gen, you still get the benefits of have the perk. You still make no noise. You still don't show up to, uh, to auto reading perks, even though you're touching a gen. So presumably you shouldn't be fearing that much for your life anymore. And number two, the 80 second, the 80 second timer is insane. It's actually nutty, crazy long. Uh, you can solve the box, you can go and do a lot of things, like get a vaccine, um, do some killer props, and you still technically haven't done anything inconspicuous. Uh, conspicuous. So you can do a lot of things. In the end game, before the last gen pops, you can go and take a hit for someone else m a minute after being unhooked. And if the killer sees you and they hear that you don't make any noise, they, they, they can't do anything. They just have to wait it out or or, or or guess whether or not you have it. I do feel like that part of the perk is a bit weird. I would make the perk a little bit shorter. I would make all of the effects tied to one and make it simpler so that if you lose the one effect, you lose all of them and it's only one minute. That would make this perk still pretty good, but not quite as crazy as it is now. Ideally, 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 this perk should be reworked and the anti-tunneling effect should go to some other common perk that any survivor can unlock, ideally, but that's more long-term. Uh, we then have Cordophobia. Cordophobia is a perk that, if used normally, is, is really not that effective. On the average map, survivors are gonna heal away from you, and without being in your terror radius, they're not gonna really be affected very much by it. Uh, they also can have insta-heals, adrenaline, whatever the hell, to dodge the effects of this perk. You know, if they heal with adrenaline, this perk obviously does nothing. So it's a perk that does very, very little, Unless you make a build around it. If you make a build around it and you send survivors to a certain map, then healing becomes so difficult and it's so unforgiven for beginners. And there's so there's so few uh, realistic counterplay to it. I feel like this is one of those perks that you only really... Uh, like impossible skill check builds. You only really see it when the killer is going nuts and making, it, and making things really, really nasty. So much like with Hyper Focus, I would like to see the effects of this perk lessened a little bit, but also make the perk a bit more usable in other contexts. So maybe the healing progress could be a bit less... Uh, the, the, the heal and debuff could be a bit less severe, but it could also have a lingering effect to last a bit longer once once you've left the the killer still radius, for example. So I'd like to see that. If, you, if you've played against this perk in, in a build like that, you would know exactly what I mean. Next up, we have Rancor. Uh, Rancor shows one survivor the obsession, the aura of the killer throughout the game, which is a trade-off, but it also gives you the location of every survivor on every gen completion. And at the end, you can permanently mori and permanently insta down the obsession. Why? Even if they don't have any obsession perks, why? I, I feel like this perk is so backwards. Let's be honest. Like, if you're in the end, if you're at the end of the game, uh, first of all, because because you want to mori the last person, uh, obviously, you're going to ignore them throughout the game. And you're going to have this issue <laughs> where you're going to be tunneling the other three people. But okay, fair. Fair enough. You're just saving the best for last, I suppose. And then in the end game, this person's going to hide and not help their team. If there's an unhooked situation, they literally can do nothing about it. They can do, they can't even outweigh it. They are permanently insta-downable and permanently moreable, no matter how many hooks they've, they've been into. Uh, I feel like this perk should have a bit more agency on the survivor side. It feels kind of weird that just one survivor is just picked. And if you're that survivor, like, if you get 
if the killer's chasing you and your teammates don't know, you're screwed. If you need to go for the rescue, well, you won't because it's too risky. You're just going to open a gate and wait by there and it's not the most fun thing ever. So I wouldn't mind the perk being stronger in some ways, but also having some timed effect or some way for the survivors not to have to deal with this, uh, this dilemma. Uh, going on to the next tier, these aren't perks that are super mega strong, but it also, like some of the things in their design also makes you think, what is going on here? The first one is Horder. Horder spawns extra chests. Okay. Um, it used to make the items in the chest worse quality, which is cool, I suppose. But let's be honest, most survivors don't deal with chests. Most survivors bring already very strong items from home, and they do gens and they get out. If they go and open chests, they're typically pretty desperate, or they are just baby little survivors, or, or very chill survivors that are going for side quests, or maybe an archive to open chests. It's so weird that you get punished for that. I, I feel... I feel strange. I used to like this perk when it was... Uh, nice on Pinhead because it told you when they picked up your item and it's still a nice perk to have if you have Franklin's and they drop their items You can see them when they pick it up So it's not the worst perk in the world But it does feel kind of weird that as a survivor you're screwed if you do totems you're screwed if you open chests and Basically the game just wants you to do the most boring thing possible and forget about everything else I also feel like the next perk hubris is a bit strange. I I don't know why survivors have to be punished for Stunning the killer. Stunning the killer is already a risky thing. If you are not lucky and the killer has bad ping, you're gonna get hit anyway. So, and not to mention that there's a lot of killers that are basically impossible to stun, the, the really strong ones, especially like Nurse. So having a perk to just screw with the killer when you when you blind them or when you stun them, like Hubris, it does feel a bit weird, but I guess they were running out of perk ideas. I don't personally love it. I feel like it's a bit strange. Uh, again, just a very personal thing. The next perk I really, really hate. It's called Shatter Hope. It's a perk that allows you to destroy a totem um, if it's been blessed. So if you find a boon circle of healing and you kick it, instead of disarming it, you will instead of disabling it, you will just permanently destroy the totem and you'll also see the, per the, the people around you. There's a problem. Totems are no longer as good as they used to be, so no one runs them. So if you have this perk and no one has a totem or no one sets up a totem, or you don't find the totem they set up, the perk does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. Now, I would love it if this perk could also be used on dull totems, so that if you see a totem and you're looking for survivors, you could break the totem, and it would be like a one-time barbecue and chili, because it would give you the auto on everyone else. But if you did this, then Pentimento would be too strong. So, even if you don't rework Pentimento, make this perk work on dull totems. Make this perk work on dull totems, and then... The killer can use each doll totem in the map as a radar for one time and one time only. And then it would be a good perk. But make it not work with Pentimento. Or else you could just break and create your own totems and that would be really stupid. Uh, next up is um, Blood Rush. This is a perk that allows survivors to injure themselves to give themselves endurance uh, for a limited time. And there are a few situations where it can work, but both of them are kind of weird. The, the situations where it works is where you have Spring Burst or some other similar perk and you use it in chase. But the killers where you would want to use this are the weaker killers anyway. And this perk only works when you're dead on hook. Not, ho not hooked once, just dead on hook. And you need to be healthy. So this is a perk that it doesn't do a whole... It's not like the most insane perk in the game. But it can give you a, a very important second win, a very important second chance. Only if you're dead on hook, and if the killer hasn't tunneled you and allow you to heal. I think this is a problem. Uh, I think... Mm, like, there are some situations where you genuinely, genuinely might want to try to escape to see if you hit stage 2 so that you can have this perk. They're far in between, but it's weird that survivors have an incentive to be dead on hook. And it's weird that killers get punished by a perk that only works if they don't tunnel. So... Similar to some of the other perks we've seen before, like Deliverance, I think uh, I think this perk is kind of weird. It should be a little bit backwards. It should allow you to get a second win when you're getting tunneled, maybe. Maybe it should work. Maybe they could rework the perk slightly to work when you're dead on hook and injured and in chase or whatever. And no one else has been hooked since. Some kind of change to make the perk uh, um, something that you, that you can use as a, help you, as a, as a helping hand. Um when you're at your worst, rather than what it does right now. Next up, we have Better Together, aka Situational Awareness. This perk is weird. It makes the generator... It's a good perk, don't get me wrong. It makes the generator that you work on yellow, 
so that other survivors can find it within a range, and you also see the killer and other survivors if they go down and stuff like that. Now, there's a problem. By the time this perk was released, it wasn't a big deal, but right now, there are so many perks that turn a, gener a generator yellow. There's at least two or three survivor perks that turn it yellow. At least two killer perks that turn it yellow, I think. There's trail. Yeah, at least trail. And this is just so weird, man. There are, like, we have perks like Deja Vu right now that are very good information perk on gens. And, and Kindred, which is really, really strong. And Bond, which has great range. Why do we have an information perk that is so mediocre? Just, just, just don't make the generator yellow. Just show your aura to your teammates across the map if you're working on a generator. Period. And then the other effect as well. Buff this perk already. It's it's so stupid. This is a common perk that would be so good for the average survivor if they could run it. But yeah, it's just a strange perk right now. And he has a limit on the range. Next up, Insidious. What is this perk, man? You cannot use this perk in too many creative ways. Most of the times, you're just gonna hook a survivor, hope that they're not on comms, hope that they don't have kindred, and you're just gonna stand there and camp and hope that you can bait someone. A stupid, stupid perk that needs to do something else. Already, please. No, it is also a bit silly. Um, it is much better now than it used to be. It's still a bit unfair that if you don't do anything and then in the and then the end game happens, you might still get kills just because you're insta and you move faster. That does create some unfair situations. But survivors, if they're smart, they should be able to avoid this. The biggest problem with Noid is that survivors kind of get punished for cleansing totems as well. If you cleanse a couple totems throughout the match. Congratulations, now the totems that are left are all better hidden. And there's a good chance that when the killer hooks someone, there, there might be a totem right next to them. There are situations in the endgame where you have a guy hooked, the totem is right next to him, the killer is camping both, and there is nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. And you just have to leave. I don't feel like that's fun. I want perks to be strong on both sides, sure, but not, not in a way that's like, okay, I stand still and you leave and no interaction. Make know it have two totems. Not just one, make it have two totems. Each of the totem gets highlighted if you're very, very close. And it needs two totems. That means that if survivors cleanse four totems, there's only one left and no, it can't work. So survivors get actually rewarded for cleansing four totems. And if there's two totems and one of them is next to the killer, right next to the killer, well, you can go for the other one that should be at least a little bit further. Now the killer can no longer defend two things in one spot because there's three things he has to defend. So make no, it have two totems. It would be completely fine. Rapid Brutality, a very weird perk that makes Killer not get blood loss, but at the same time, um, be a bit faster whenever they M1. This perk has not seen a lot of, like, super mainstream use, but I do see a lot of high-level players find a perk slot for this perk on specific Killers. And I think this perk will be an issue down the line, potentially, with Killers to come. If there's ever a Killer that doesn't build blood loss naturally, what is a killer that doesn't build bloodlust naturally? For example, Clown. Clown, uh, when he throws bottles, he resets bloodlust. And he already speeds himself up naturally. So, killers like Clown or Doctor or Singularity, these killers don't typically go for bloodlust. But this perk works pretty well on them. If this perk ever gets buffed, or if another perk comes out, or if some other thing happens, I can see this perk being an issue. There's already so many perks on both sides, especially on Survivor, but, but also on Killer, that mess with movement speeds. And right now, if you're being chased as a survivor, you have no idea when to drop the pallet, when to go for an extra uh, when, for an extra loop around the structure. And I think this perk doesn't help. So my personal opinion, it's it's a weird design. I also feel uh, similarly about Coup de Gras. Uh, this perk, I'm not going to say it got over buffed, but it's in a really weird spot right now. Where if they do a couple gens, now you have four lunges that are extremely long and survivors have no warning that it's there. So, uh, I also feel like in chase as a survivor, this is gonna just motivate you to play super safe, to pre-drop every pallet until you're sure that this perk isn't there and you can't really know until it hits you. So, I don't super love it. But one thing that Noed, Rapid Brutality, Coup de Gras, and Save Best for Last have in common is that these are not perks that you run on Nurse, typically. These are perks that you run on the weaker killers, so we can give them a bit of a pass. A perk that you would run on Nurse, however, is the next one. Nowhere to hide. An insanely good perk that works very seamlessly when you kick gens, especially when you have pop and other perks to kick gens, like eruption. And it shows you the auras of everyone around you. But if you're a, ca a character that is fast, like say nurse, and you teleport, you still see the auras around you. So you can kick a gen, move away, and see auras 
enveloping you even very far away. That thing should go back to how it was in the PTB. That shouldn't happen. This Berg is already so strong on Nurse, and it has no cooldown whatsoever. There are so many read out of reading perks and information perks that have obnoxious cooldowns, or that have a lot of conditions, or, or that have a very limited time. And this Berg is just, it's just insane. And it also works better with Lethal Pursuer as well. Very, very crazy Berg. It needs a bit of a, a, a slightly longer cooldown, and it shouldn't follow you around. Uh, for the average killer, that wouldn't be an issue. For nurse, it would make it a little bit less oppressive. We also have two perks right now that are currently bugged and are a little bit stronger than they should be. Uh, the first one is deadlock. It's really, really annoying, but if you have a gen that's locked by deadlock, uh, I'm not sure if other forms also affect it, that gen can be hit by painress and it will still regress through it. That shouldn't happen according to the developers. So yeah, this perk is a bit of an issue right now. Uh, please don't abuse it until that's fixed. And another one is um, uh, flip flop, uh, blood twist. Uh, with blood twist, and if you down yourself, and you're holding Pinhead's box, you actually auto solve it. I don't think this should be a thing. Uh, I made a video talking about all of the amazing things that blood twist can do uh, yesterday. If you want to watch it, uh, I don't know if the developers think this is okay, but in my opinion, it is a bug and it shouldn't be okay. Now, um, this list is maybe not entirely comprehensive. If there's any other perk that you think its mere presence contributes to, like, unhealthy gameplay, uh, please do let me know, and maybe I'll agree with you. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.